What's up, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in for another drum lesson. Now, it's been a while since I've been able to do a full-length video lesson on YouTube, so thanks for your patience. We've been doing some really cool stuff at fisherdrumming.com. We have been doing live lessons um, weekly, and it's been really fun to actually connect with drummers over Zoom, and if you're interested in that, visit the link down in the description below where I can tell you more about it. All right, let's get into the lesson now. So what we're doing here is we're taking patterns. We're grouping those patterns together to create a complete phrase. Then once we have a full measure of a phrase, we're actually gonna even combine that with other measures. So we're gonna create three measures, which would be in this context, 16th notes, right? So we have these 16th note patterns that we're playing, and then we take those phrases and put them in like an exercise where we're playing one after the other after the other, and we have to get really good at repeating and duplicating and playing them without messing up. What that does is it helps internalize these even better for you until they become part of your natural vocabulary. And all those little patterns that you learned make up bigger phrases now, and you ha you're more confident and you're more comfortable to put those together in different ways and orchestrate them around the kit in new styles and new variations. So I'm gonna break this down into three chunks. We're gonna be looking at one measure at a time. I'm gonna play each one for you, break it down real slow, and then we'll go through the whole thing at the end, and you can add this to your practice routine. I think you're gonna find it very fun and very challenging at the same time. Okay, let me break down the first half of this, the first eight notes, and I'll play it nice and slow so you can follow along. I'll show you the orchestration, the way that I'm playing this, okay? Here we go. Okay, right, left, right, left, right, singles. Right, left, right, left, right, kick, kick, right. ba 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 da 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 Nice and simple, right? The second part, we have a big accented left, a kick, and then a big accented right, all on the snare right there. And that right hand starts off a paradiddle diddle. Right, left, right, right, left, left. So the rest of those notes, left, right, right, left, left, all are ghosted on the snare. So that way we're getting some breakup with the dynamics here. It sounds a lot more interesting that way. We're just gonna accent that first note of the paradiddle diddle though. Left kick, right, left, right, right, left, left, looks like this. Really slow, let's play the whole thing. Now let me show you how this sounds faster as we get this really cranked up and flowing around the kit. Here we go. So if you notice, not too complex, we got some singles, double kick, and then a paradiddle diddle in there, and we move that around the kit. Has a great flow, a great sound. I just wanna make a quick note here before we get into the lesson. If you found my videos helpful, if it's entertaining for you, if it's helpful for you, if you've really enjoyed it, please consider supporting the channel. There's a very simple way you can do that, and it's by buying me a cup of coffee. Buying a monthly cup of coffee is a small investment for you, but it helps us uh, a lot. It would really, really help me in video production, editing to develop the channel and take it to the next level and come out with content even more quickly for you. So please consider doing that if you like my videos. The link is in the description below. Okay guys, let's move on to the phrase number two here. This is an eighth note pattern we're playing two times. So just repeating it two times, super simple. And we're bringing in the hi-hat, which I love to always utilize in fills, in kind of, you know, chop things like this. We don't only wanna use our toms, we wanna utilize our cymbals. So it's something that you can really kind of throw in there when you're grooving, it's super fun to play. All right, here's the sticking. Watch it as I play it first, and then I'll break it down. Now follow along with the chart. Here's how it looks, super slow. Now what makes this cool is even though the sticking is the same, the orchestration changes, 
the second half. So, both times you're playing right, left, right, left, right, left, left kick. Now, the second half, we're starting the right as an accented note. So we're changing the way we're playing it. It's still the same sticking, but we're changing the sound of it by moving our right hand to the snare. And this is gonna be our big backbeat on three. Three, right? So it's like a halftime feel. So we got right, left, right on the snare, left, ghosted, right, left, left, ghosted, kick. So here's what that looks like. Okay, again. First part. Second part. All together. Super cool chop. In order to get fast with that, you need to stay nice and loose, okay? Keep a loose grip, and notice, we have to make this work by not hitting our hands together, right? So that means when I come across, I don't wanna come in the same path as my left hand. My left hand comes down, my right hand comes over. And when I play that right, left, right, I'm doing a right, a left comes through, and goes straight to the snare. So that way I'm not wasting time how can I go from here and then the next note's got to be the left hand? If I'm playing it like a robot, tat, 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 then my left hand's not going to be ready to go to the snare. So I have to create a swoop. It goes, hit the, hit the hi-hat, go straight to the snare to be ready for the ghost note. Watch how that happens. It comes right under. So the left hand, you have to get this technique down where you're keeping it low and you're keeping it under the right hand, okay? That's gonna free you up a lot in your drumming. If you play things fast, you have to have the path of least resistance and just make it flow. That's a little tip on the side there, okay? All right, now let's move on to the third chop. Now this one's kind of exciting because we have some crashes happening, so it's got a bigger feel and it's kind of more of a flashy chop. Um, what we're doing here is we're actually playing a paradiddle diddle with a double kick at the end. And it's as simple as that. We're repeating that two times. Now, the little secret here is in order to get that crash, what we're doing is we play a unison note. So instead of just playing right, left, right, right, left, left, kick, kick every time, when you first start it, you're gonna be playing a right and left together. So then it goes left, left. So your, your left hand actually plays twice right there, but you're really keeping that same idea of the pair diddle diddle because your right hand's still playing. So here's what it looks like, and then I'll break it down. Imagine you're playing a pair of diddle diddle, right, left, right, right, left, left, and then add a kick kick at the end. Put your right hand on a voice and hit the snare with your left hand to start it off. Okay, that's as simple as that. That's the first half. 
The second half is, e is even easier. You're just playing a regular paradiddle diddle with a kick kick, and you're gonna move your right hand to a different voice, like a tom. So now just play it back to back. Here's what it looks like, it's really slow. So let me play it nice and slow. Let's just play it and loop it together. Here we go. Right, guys and the last thing is linking these phrases together to make the chop train and playing all three of them okay so what I recommend doing is playing each measure four times and going to the next one four times going to the next one four times and then starting all over again and this will be just a great challenge a great workout a great exercise for you to develop your chops so I'm gonna play that for you now I'll play it to two different tempos a, one a little slower, one a little faster, and show you the whole train. So if you want to get better at flowing on the drums, learn things like this, learn patterns like this that you can group together and create bigger phrases, longer phrases, and push yourself. How much can you memorize? How much can you flow at one time? If you're given an eight bars, 16 bars, can you flow around the drums? Exercises like this will help you get there. So make sure you practice it, guys. Add it to your practice routine for weeks to come. Now, before you click away, hear me out because I have a free course for you. That's right, a completely free Kickstarter course. I call it the Kickstarter course. It's just a bundle of lessons on different topics on the drums that really will help you get motivated, give you a lot to practice. Anyways, take care, have fun, and I'll see you on the next lesson here. Peace.